Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today, let us discuss about inflammatory bowel disease. Inflammatory bowel disease is a chronic inflammatory condition of colon and small intestine. Depending on the area which is involved, it is it is classified as Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. The cause of IBD is not known but there is a trigger that trigger is mostly due to immune reaction and genetical problems and sometimes it is it is uh, due to the alteration in the intestinal bacteria all these things can contribute to the uh, problem that is inflammatory bowel disease one of the major uh, problem in inflammatory bowel disease is uh, first classification is ulcerative colitis that is characterized by recurring episodes of inflammation limited to mucosal layer of the colon that is very important it is the inflammation of mucosal layer of colon it commonly involves the rectum and may extend in a proximal and continuous fashion it's continuous uh, ulceration uh, and it involves other parts of the colon ulcerative colitis usually starts from the rectum Sometimes it is uh, 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 remain localized as a rectal problem that is ulcerative proctitis or it can even extend upwards proximally and sometimes rarely it can uh, involve the full large bowel that is also possible so either rectal from rectum it can extend upwards slightly or complete uh, bowel itself large bowel itself can Involved. that is ulcerative colitis so characteristic features are only mucosal layer is involved it's a continuous problem and rectum is classically involved Crohn's disease is comes under the same problem that is an inflammatory bowel disease it is the problem here is a transmural inflammation the all the layers of intestine is involved here transmural inflammation of the GI tract it involves entire gastrointestinal tract from mouth to perianal area. About 35% of the Crohn's disease uh, cause involves the ileum alone, that is called as ileitis. About 45% involve, 45 involve the ileum and colon, ileocolitis. About 20% involve the colon alone, that is uh, granulomatous colitis. So there are different uh, uh, varieties of Crohn's disease but here what we have to understand it is a transmural inflammation of the gastrointestinal tract so here you can see the Crohn's disease we can remember it as uh, a mnemonic Christmas cobblestone mucosa you can see the mucosa here is like cobblestone first picture you can see that is an endoscopic view high temperature fever can be there in most of the patient that is possible both in Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis reduced intestinal lumen you can see the lumen is reduced because of the thickened uh, mucosa intestinal fistulas can be seen in uh, Crohn's disease skip lesions that area there is no inflammation transmural inflammation and granulomas are seen malabsorption is due to inflamed intestine will not absorb any uh, type of uh, uh, like nutrients that leads to malabsorption syndrome abdominal pain can be there submucosal fibrosis can produce can be produced in uh, late stages of the disease you can see here the differentiating features with between ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease involvement sigmoid colon and rectum terminal ileum and right side of the colon can be involved inflammation is limited to mucosa and their thickness or transmural thickness with granuloma cobblestone mucosa we have seen in the previous slide cobblestone uh, it's seen in ulcerative colitis Crohn's disease deep ulceration appearing as linear fissures the mucosa between them appears as cobblestones skip areas not seen in ulcerative colitis seen in Crohn's disease pseudopolyps not common in ulcerative colitis pseudopolyps are normal or hypertrophied residual mucosa within the areas of atrophy 
cryptitis and crypt abscesses common in ulcerative colitis bloody diarrhea is common in ulcerative colitis it's not common in crohn's disease now you can see the differences between uh, ulcerative colitis and crohn's disease anus rectum sigmoid colon is more involved in ulcerative colitis whereas Uh, small intestine and some part of the colon is involved in Crohn's disease. Now complications, if we see uh, the complications like fissures, fistulas are common in Crohn's disease. Structures, colon cancer, fever, weight loss, malabsorption all are common in Crohn's disease. So most of the complications are more on the Crohn's disease side. Now, there are some extra intestinal manifestation of inflammatory bowel disease both ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease can have in various intensities of this problem. Patient can have uveitis, episcleritis, conjunctivitis, arthritis, arthritis especially like ankylosing, spondylitic like features like lower limbs are predominantly involved, asymmetrical joint involvement, sacroiliate joint involvement, lower spine involvement, all these things are classical for uh, arthritis. Skin erythema nodosum, pyoderma gangrenosum, liver, fatty liver, sclerosing cholangitis, chronic hepatitis, cirrhosis, gallbladder, gallstones can be there, nephrolithiasis, venous thrombosis, malnutrition features, all these things you can see in uh, inflammatory bowel disease. Now, extra intestinal manifestations of IBD are uh, you can see this picture, this chart, eye involvement, joint involvement, skin involvement is common with Crohn's disease, liver involvement, gallbladder involvement is common with Crohn's disease, nephrolithiasis is common with Crohn's disease, venous thrombosis is common with ulcerative colitis. But however, these features will not uh, give you a, di a diagnostic clue for the diagnosis of uh, different types of inflammatory bowel disease. Uh, this picture shows uh, various uh, problems uh, and various problems produced by uh, ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease and extra intestinal features of uh, inflammatory bowel disease. A lot of vitamin deficiencies can be seen in patients who is having uh, inflammatory bowel disease. Patient can have protein malabsorption, vitamin malabsorption and patient can even have protein losing enteropathies, blood losing enteropathies, all these things are very common. So patient can have anemia, various vitamin deficiencies, protein deficiency, all these things can be there. Now the major investigation in infl inflammatory bowel disease, we always do uh, blood counts to see whether anemia is present or not, B12 folic acid deficiency can also lead to blood uh, uh, blood reduction like anemia can be there because of B12 and folic acid deficiency. Albumin is low that can produce bilateral pedal edema. ESR, CRPs are elevated because it is an inflammatory marker. Stool culture can be done to rule out uh, superimposed bacterial infection. Endoscopy, colonoscopy with bios biopsy is very, very important to make a diagnosis of uh, inflammatory bowel disease and we can know what is the type of inflammatory bowel disease and we can even know differential diagnosis of inflammatory bowel disease like malignancies, tuberculosis and other chronic infections. Endoscopy, ulcerative colitis, Inflammation involves the rectum in most cases and spreads proximally. Typical endoscopic findings in the patients with ulcerative colitis includes edematous mucosa, erythema, loss of vascular markings and mucosal uh, friability. Typical endoscopic findings of Crohn's disease are discontinuous distribution of longitudinal ulcers, cobblestone appearance and small of the ulcerations in longitudinal fashion. So you can see here the cobblestone appearance in uh, Crohn's disease. So we remember Crohn's disease, cobblestone, C for C and longitudinal ulcers. Cobblestones are classical features of Crohn's disease. This is endoscopic view of uh, ulcerative 
colitis severe ulcerative colitis management is uh, in emergency room is like this we have to always take care of the patient's airway breathing circulation because patient can have uh, tachypnea tachycardia hypotension shock hypovolemia uh, blood loss all these things can be there so hypertension we have to treat with intravenous fluids blood transfusion can be given IV methylprednisolone can be given 60 mg daily or hydrocortisone can be given antibiotics to prevent infection preferably gram negative coverage but present as back to more mirapram nutritional support is very very important because many patients can have vitamin deficiencies that should be corrected electrolyte imbalance can be there that should be corrected and hypoproteinemia also should be corrected subcutaneous heparin should be given uh, in, in in patients who is having Uh, ulcerative colitis because they can have uh, high risk for venous thromboembolism opiates and anti diarrheal drugs should be avoided because this patient can have diarrhea he, uh, if we give uh, anti diarrheal drugs that can produce toxic megacolon and it should be avoided iv cyclosporin is uh, uh, one drug which can be given in acute condition 2 mg per kg or infliximab can be given 5 mg per kg uh, 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 that can be given in patients who are not responding to initial corticosteroid therapy active proctitis we can give drugs like mesalazine 1 g suppository bd or enema 4 g bd then oral mesalazine 2.4 to 4.8 g daily 3 divided doses hydrocortisone can be given as suppository or tablets sulfasalazine a, a prodrug uh, for 5 asa can be given 25 mg per kg per day can be started balsalicid is another drug that is dose is 75 to 100 mg per kg per day other drugs are infliximab adalimumab and other drugs can also be given in inflammatory bowel disease but main drugs are uh, hydrocortisone sulfasalazine or valsalicide or mesalamine so we can continue the treatment after remission uh, same drugs can be continued crohn's disease also similar type of uh, treatment should be given uh, but here maintenance uh, uh, treatment or during remission maintenance is azathioprine or methotrexate with folic acid but other treatment options are similar to uh, ulcerative colitis so here we are giving azathioprine uh, 25 to 50 mg per day or methotrexate 25 mg once weekly with uh, uh, folic acid then slowly we can reduce the dose so here you can see the uh, pyramidal approach to uh, inflammatory bowel disease we can give 5 amino salicylates mislamine sulfasalazine then antibiotics should be given oral corticosteroids can be given then iv corticosteroids can be given azathioprine should be continued for maintenance methotrexate also can be continued for maintenance cyclosporin and infliximab can be given as biological infliximab is a monoclonal antibody can be tried then anti indegrins vedolizumab can be tried if uh, there is uh, adhesions or intestinal obstruction or if there is peritonitis then surgical intervention is required so we have discussed one of the most uh, important inflammatory disease of the bowel that is inflammatory bowel disease we have two important differential diagnosis ulcerative colitis and crohn's disease all these diseases
person with abdominal pain bloody diarrhea weight loss fever and some extra intestinal manifestations like uh, eye involvement uh, ankylosing spondylitis like features so this patient can come to emergency room in acute phase they can have severe abdominal pain they can have severe anemia they can have a hypotension they can have shock so initial management is very important and uh, steroid has got a major role in treatment of these diseases in acute phase so that also can be tried and there are newer drugs like uh, 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 monoclonal antibodies are available for the treatment of this problem thank you